Hi there, welcome to Shipping 101. Shipping with Steve. Shipping like a... Anyway. Um, what we have here, Pokemon cards. Now, we have some rather delicate Pokemon cards and we don't want them to get damaged. So I'm gonna give you an idea of how I would ship, not how I would, how I actually do ship Pokemon cards. Graded ones and raw ones. I don't ship that many raw ones anymore, but if I did, this is how I would do it. I use a lot of shipping materials. I am a firm believer in more is less, or less is more. More is less? I don't really know how to say it. I'm a firm believer in just using a shitload of shipping materials because I don't want the stuff to get damaged. So, step one. I have this bubble bag. I don't know the dimensions in your country, but I think it's 12 centimeters by 18 centimeters. Card goes in there. I have these boxes. They're a die cut box. So it's like one of those boxes you can like put together and they go together just like this. It's pretty simple. And it's quite nice because when you get a big box of these and they're flat, it doesn't take out that much space. And when you want to use them, you do it. So if I was shipping a card that was $100, 100 to 200, I would do it like this. Everything, pretty much any value would get shipped the same, but I put in one of these, and then I put another one of these. So bubble wrap, box, and then two more layers of bubble wrap. And then, in this thing, it is called a poly mailer, or a courier bag, or whatever it is and where you are. That's what I use. Now, Get the shipping label. I would, you can just do, use a self-seal thing here and then you just put the shipping label on the front. Super easy and the shipping label on this bag, the shipping label won't come off. It won't like peel off. It'll only be able to be ripped off after it sets for like a few seconds. And th this size, I'm not really too sure what the size are, is what the size is, but it's pretty much perfect size. Imagine this was an international shipping label. I have to print them out on paper. So it goes in this thing, you can pull that off and you can stick it to it and it'll fit exactly and it's perfect, you know, bulletproof. I mean, there's my Pikachu trophy in this box and I'm sure you could throw this around, bounce it around from wall to wall, unless a truck runs over it, but it's not very likely. Now, we'll put this back in here. If I was shipping this card, let's say you want something truly Truly bulletproof. Truly bulletproof. I have another die cut box, slightly bigger. And just remember, the better shipping you use, and the more materials, the more impressed people that buy off you are gonna be. I can't even tell you how many times. What are you doing, cat? Look at this fish thing just going off in the background because my cat's just nuts. I'm trying to make a video here. I'm sorry. You get it back. I'll turn it back on. All right. Where was I? Yes. Your customers will be very happy if you choose good shipping methods and it gets to them 100% of the time. So this right here, I don't really carry big boxes because I don't ship large things very often. But this is a PSA return box. And my pink boxes, fit perfectly fine in there. And then I just fill the rest with bubble wrap. And now oh, the label's ripped off, I can show it. But yeah, that's pretty much just how I do it. This is a bit snug, but you don't have to copy this. But if this is an expensive item, it would go on something like that. I would highlight the box with some tape that was like yellow or red or pink. I use pink boxes because Every box in the world is brown, and the pink box is better, like less likely to me to get lost. I don't think a pink box is going to get lost in a warehouse or be underneath, because it will always be... You'll always be able to see a pink box. That, that's just... Maybe, maybe not, but I mean, knock on wood, I've had nothing go missing. International, anywhere. For like a year and a half now. So, just like that, all up, this setup... All these materials cost me about one dollar. Now I understand margins are thin on some people's things. For me, I just add it to the price. 
added to the shipping price. I refuse to skimp. Someone gets a better price on something and I just ship it. I don't know how some people do it. They just put them in a box like this or in a bubble wrap and then in something like this. Like the moment you sell anything, it's not yours anymore. So you just need to realize that you, you're taking care of someone else's things. Now, imagine I just had some raw cards, some single cards. It's the same thing. Put them in some top loaders, put them in there, in there, close the box up. You know, let's say it wasn't $30,000 and it was like a few hundred. In a bubble wrap or a box in this pink thing, it would be perfectly fine if you're shipping it in your own country. If you're shipping overseas, I always think you should use double boxed because you never know what's going on at those international shipping centers. It's always getting bad. I don't want to jump on the box just to show that the stuff won't get damaged, but you can just imagine. So yeah, I'll uh, maybe throw some links in the description to some places where I buy off. You probably won't be able to buy them because you know they're... it's not in your country or whatever, but you know, I'll do it. Now all my cards are safe because I ship them perfectly. How good is that? Thanks for watching.